In this briefing, I will introduce the primary effects of the controls and their visual references, as well as the lookout procedure. When the glider is flying, it can rotate around its centre of gravity along each of the three axes. We call these rotations pitch, roll and yaw. For each rotation, there is a corresponding control surface, the elevator for pitch, ailerons for roll and the rudder for yaw. First, let's look at how the elevator controls pitch. I've highlighted the control stick and the elevator. Moving the stick forward lowers the nose. We call this a nose down attitude. Conversely, moving the stick back raises the nose. How does that look from the glider? We can judge the glider's attitude by the gap between the nose and the horizon. Moving the stick forward and lowering the nose increases the amount of ground in view. Conversely, raising the nose decreases the amount of ground in view. There is a relationship between the attitude and the airspeed of the glider. The more nose down the glider is, the faster it will fly. However, it will also descend faster. Now, let's look at how the ailerons roll the glider. The ailerons on each wing always move in opposite directions to each other. Moving the stick to the right will cause the glider to roll to the right. The glider will continue to roll until the stick is centralised. With the stick centralised, the glider will maintain the angle of bank. As the glider is banked, it will turn. Moving the stick to the left will cause the glider to roll to the left. The further the stick is moved to the left, the faster the glider will roll to the left. Centralising the stick when the wings are level will return the glider to straight flight. The angle of bank can be judged by looking over the nose. Notice how the horizon is symmetrical with each side of the instrument panel. When the glider is rolled, this is not the case. The angle of bank can also be judged by looking along the wings. When the wings are level, the tips will appear symmetrical around the horizon. But when the glider is banked, one wing will appear above the horizon, while the other will be below. Now, let's look how the rudder yaws the glider. The rudder is controlled with the rudder pedals. The pedals move forwards and backwards in opposite directions to each other. Pushing the right rudder pedal forwards causes the glider to yaw to the right. It is important to note that although the nose of the glider is pointing in a new direction, it is still travelling in the same direction. Flying like this is inefficient and will increase the glider's rate of descent. Pushing the left rudder pedal yaws the glider to the left. Yaw can easily be seen from the cockpit by a change in the direction the nose is pointing. Also notice how the yaw string is moved indicating that the glider is yawed to the right and therefore not flying in the direction it is facing. If we only look over the nose when flying, we have a very narrow field of view. It is essential for our own safety and the safety of others that we maintain good lookout. Horizontally, we can see from wingtip to wingtip, while vertically we can see from almost directly above to just below the nose. The lookout cycle includes three components. Lookout, checking the attitude and checking the instruments and should be done both frequently and regularly. The ideal lookout cycle starts by looking over the nose, then 45 degrees to one side and 90 degrees to one side or as far around as is possible to look. Then look overhead, look straight again at 45 degrees to the other side, then 90 degrees to the other side before looking overhead and returning to looking in front of you. While we do look above and below the glider, the focus of our lookout should be at the same level, as that is where the greatest risk of collision occurs. When the glider is banked, we must modify our lookout so that we are still looking out level with the horizon. In practice, this might result in a blind spot under the raised wing. This is why lookout is especially important before turning. Now we'll introduce the air brakes, which raise vertically out of the wings. Despite their name, they are not for slowing the glider down, but for increasing the rate of descent. When open, the air brakes disrupt airflow over the wing, reducing the amount of lift they produce. 
Opening the air brakes further increases the rate of descent. On most gliders, the air brakes are controlled by a blue lever on the left of the cockpit. Pulling the lever back opens the air brakes. Pushing forward closes the air brakes. Pushing fully forward locks the air brakes closed. The final control we'll introduce are the flaps. As most training gliders do not have flaps, we will only cover them briefly. Flaps change the shape of the wing, optimizing it for different flying conditions. When flaps point up, negative flap, the wing has reduced drag at high speeds. Small amounts of positive flap increase lift and reduce the stall speed, useful when flying slowly and thermaling. Larger amounts of positive flap are used when landing. The air exercises associated with this briefing are for the instructor to demonstrate each of the controls, including the visual references, for the student to practice the use of the controls, and for the student to practice the lookout during the whole flight. This exercise has no specific threats or errors that require management, but the general risks associated with collision, distance to the airfield and pupil error or adverse reaction must be considered. These can be maintained by keeping a good lookout, monitoring the height and distance relationship to the airfield, especially when downwind, and the instructor taking control if the pupil makes an error.